This is Contractor Sense with Ruth King. Welcome to Contractor Sense. Here you discover ideas, tactics, news, and information that matters to your contracting business and you. I'm your host, Ruth King. This episode is sponsored by Profitability Movement. Google Profitability Dash Movement to join this community of business owners focused on building profit, increasing wealth, and giving back. Thank you for joining us. Here's how we will help your business and you today. What are you grateful for? How do you expect how do you express gratitude, even in situations which initially feel horrible? You had to fire your oldest employee, a close relative passes away, a customer who's been with your company for more than 10 years suddenly leaves, or something else. My guest today, Lisa Ryan, gives you the keys to easily and quickly express gratitude, something that can take less than 10 minutes a day, and you can do it any time of day. I first met Lisa when she presented our Women in HVACR annual conference. I was impressed and wanted to share Lisa and wanted Lisa to share her thoughts on gratitude with you. Lisa, welcome to Contractor Sense. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. My pleasure. And I will also say that Lisa does a weekly email, which I subscribe to, and it, it's really cool. It makes you think. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, it's it's real. It used to be evergreen, but I tell you, once I started just saying, okay, what's going on this week? And uh, no matter what it is, how can I find things to be grateful for? It really, it, it got real. So thank you for noticing. Yeah, it does. I mean, and, and the, the thing is that, you know, things happen for a reason and we have to figure out what they are. Sometimes we'll never figure it out, but you know, what's the good and what happens? Did it force you to do something? Yeah. Well, and the interesting thing is the posts that I least want to write because they're the most raw or whatever are Painful. the ones that I, yeah, that I get the most responses from, but almost without exception, you know, I'll hear from somebody that will say, this is exactly the message I needed to hear today. So, you know, you sometimes pay attention to that little voice that says, yeah, this is what you're supposed to be writing about it. Whether you want to or not, just do it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, little voice. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's do a little bit of background. Let's talk about how you got into um, expressing gratitude and how it's worked for your clients and your family and yourself and everything like that. Share the story. Sure. I actually went to a uh, four-day seminar back in 2009, and it included a firewalk, and which is so it was a super powerful experience. You know, probably you've gone to conferences or if you've gone to training, and you walk out of there feeling like you can take on the world, and then a couple days later, life slaps you upside the head, and it go, everything goes back to the way it was before. So after this four-day conference. My friends and I, we were all jacked up and we were like, well, we, we needed to figure out a way to keep it going. So we opened up a Facebook thread and we were sharing things like lessons we learned and people we met. And then my friend Mike said, why don't we share three things that we're grateful for? And so we did that every day. We held each other accountable. And I noticed almost immediately how things were starting to change for me. And it was so profound that I actually started researching gratitude. And in this 14 years now that I've been doing this, I mean, I've read hundreds, if not thousands of white papers and books and attended programs and researched it to see, you know, was what I went through something? Was it based on something or was it just luck? And what I discovered is that when you have a regular practice of gratitude, it literally rewires your brain. So I started my business knowing that that was basically the message that I was supposed to share. Um, and back in those those days, this was you know 2009, 2010, we really weren't talking about gratitude and appreciation in the workplace. But we were talking about employee engagement and retention. <laughs> Basically, I took that message of gratitude and wove it into what companies want, needed to hear at that point as far as because they were really just kind of getting on that 
that appreciation, that engagement bandwagon. And now, you know, 14 years later, I'm hired just as often to talk about gratitude as I am workplace culture because we're getting it at such a deeper level. And there's been so much that has come out between the science and the research that supports it, that we really can change our lives and change the way we look at what happens by us simply by acknowledging the good when we can find it. Yeah. And and, and it really, you know, I think it's also getting rid of the emotion. It's like, okay, this happened. Fine. What can we take out of it and learn from it? And it's the way I look at it. And I think sometimes with age comes wisdom. And I don't know whether that's true or not, but I, in my 30s, I would have been a whole lot more emotional than I am now. Well, and there's a part of experiencing the emotions because sometimes, you know, things just suck. You know, you get mad, you get angry, you get upset and all of these things. And so I say to feel those emotions But when you start coming out of the rawness of whatever that is, to be able to say, okay, done now, what's one thing I can find? What's one good thing that came out of that? So the emotion is still there and we can we can get ourselves turned around to gratitude much more quickly than that, you know, having a pity party and you're the only person invited. (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't like pity parties. I really, you, you know what, you know what I used to do. I haven't done it in a really long time. When something really crappy happened, I'd get on my treadmill and run a nine-minute mile for forty-five minutes, and then I didn't care anymore. <laughs> I would be dead if I did that. <laughs> right now, I probably would be too. I haven't run a nine-minute mile in a really long time, but um, but when I was younger, that's what I used to do. <laughs> Holy cow. Even when I was training for my first and only 5K, it's like I trained at a 12-minute mile. I am just not fast. So God bless you, sister. That's awesome. (laughs) I have news for you. I'm not even running 12-minute miles now. It's a little bit longer than that. But going back for my first um, half in February, so it'll be fun. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. So anyway, let's get back to gratitude. All right. So um, before we do that, let's, let's start with you know the 10 minutes a day when we get um, back from break so if somebody wants to get in touch with you and somebody wants to talk to you or somebody wants to get on your email um, list how do they do that um, they can go to my website is lisa ryan speaks.com and to get on the um, the gratitude thought of the week just send me an email to lisa at gratitude g-r-a-t-e-g-y dot com and let me know you heard us on the show and you'd like to be added to gratitude thought my website is new and i didn't include gratitude thought as a sign up on that six lashes with a wet noodle (laughs) (laughs) we'll be right back thanks for listening to contractor sense are you one of the contractors who enjoys getting and analyzing your financial statements each month If not, it's probably because you haven't taken the time to discover what your profit and loss statement and balance sheet are telling you. And you probably are not making good business decisions based on timely, accurate financial statements. You know you have to do something about this, but where do you turn? Root Kings makes your financial statements fun and sexy online course. These easy to understand four sessions explain financial statements in English rather than accounting babble. You'll discover what your financial statements mean and how to analyze them each month. Then you'll have the info you need to spot minor issues and take care of them before they become major crises and run you out of cash. Enroll today. Click on the link in the show notes or call us at 770-729-0258. We're back. Thanks for listening to Contractor Sense. I'm speaking with Lisa Ryan. I think you coined the word gratitude, didn't you? Yes, as a matter. Well, it was actually kind of funny because it was a joint effort with a friend of mine. My business when I first started it was appreciation strategies. So I was chief appreciation strategist at appreciation strategies. Oh my gosh. Which which was a mouthful. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, was, I was with one of my friends, Dick Clough, and he's an old marketing guy from way back. And we were trying to coin a word and we're walking along Lake Erie, just talking, mushing all these words together. And finally I looked at him. I said, dude, it's 5.30 on a Friday night. I got a date with my husband. I got to go. So my husband, Scott, and I are out to dinner and Dick calls me and he said, it's strategy." I said, oh my God, it's strategy." And I looked at my husband. I said, it's strategy." And Scott's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was one of those things that when two minds come together and start processing that that power of that mastermind where the third mind appeared. Yep. And yep. it was, uh, yeah, so it was a joint effort. And then for about 10 years afterwards, every year on Christmas, Dick would give me the rights to use strategy. And I was like, dude, it was a registered trademark like year one. So it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have strategy, and what's what do we do in ten minutes a day? Where do we go? You know what? It starts off in in let and let's just look at it in two minute increments, two to five minute increments. Because, for example, when I get up in the morning, um, the writing my gratitude journal. So writing five sentences, starting with "I am grateful for." The nice thing about the morning journal is you can be grateful in advance. So I'm so grateful that the meeting with my boss went well today. I'm so grateful that I closed the big deal I've been working on, whatever it is. So it sets that positive expectation um, for the rest of your day. The evening journal, which is also about another you know, two to five minutes depending, is looking back on the day and saying, okay, what are five good things that happened to me today? And after a particularly horrific day, you know, that can actually be the more difficult of the two to do between the morning and the evening. But it just goes to show you that again, when you focus on, you have that question, what is the good that I can find in this? Then it, you sh it shows you that there always is something good. And then throughout the day, I like taking just little gratitude breaks. There's apps out there that you can do for gratitude. But, you know, if you look at that, you know, two, min two to three minutes in the morning of writing down five sentences, five things that you're grateful for, doing the same thing in the evening, and then just, you know, I've had some clients that will, um, you know, just have a ding on their phone. You know, they set the, the timer to go off at certain times and then they think about something that they're grateful for. And then my favorite activity that I know I shared at Women of HVACR is the ABCs of gratitude. So that is as you're trying to fall asleep at night and you know, you have all those voices trying to keep you up, reminding you of all the things you didn't get done and all the things you need to do tomorrow. If you just pick a random letter in the alphabet and start with that letter. So I'm going to start with uh, C. I'm so grateful for the Christmas holidays. D, I'm grateful for my dad. E, I'm grateful for everyone I met. Whatever it is, you make it up as you go along. But what that does is it gives all those little voices something to do. And even though there's nights that we will go through the alphabet, you know, twice, <laughs> in most cases, five or six letters and you're sound asleep. And the other interesting thing about doing that practice of the ABCs of gratitude is that when people who have a regular practice of gratitude, research shows that they sleep more soundly, they awaken more refreshed. So, the, it, you know, we look at the things that we can do to inspire more positivity in our life and that to me, I can't tell you how often I use it. It is a drug-free way to fall asleep and have a positive experience in doing so. Yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things, you know, all right, we're talking about the personal side, but we can do the same thing for our team members and our absolutely. employees. I mean, you know, what are you grateful for them? Do you tell them that? You know, yeah. it, it, my, my thing is that, you know, if you don't talk about it, nobody can read your mind. Right. We assume that people know that we appreciate them. We assume all these feelings, but 
your employees want to know how they are contributing, how their efforts are making a difference. So if you are not the soft, fuzzy person that's going to go and say, oh, I so appreciate you, <laughs> look for ways to be specific. You know what? I really appreciate the fact that you worked 45 minutes of overtime so we could get that job done. Customer was thrilled. Now we don't have to work about it, worry about it anymore. Thank you. And there's going to be some managers that are out there that are saying, why should I thank them? They just made 45 minutes in overtime. Why should I? You know, <laughs> that's all they're looking for. But you know what? Next time you ask that employee, hey, can you pitch in for, a, I need you for an hour. And the employee's going to be like, you didn't even notice that I did it last time. I got a hot date. I'm out of here. So just by acknowledging and being specific, not the, hey, great job. What was so great about it? What is it that they did specifically that you noticed? Because now your employees know that you are paying attention to them in a positive way instead of just busting them all the time when they're messing up. Yeah, it's the positive things that get them. And the other thing that I found also works is, you know, now some people want the praise in public, some of people don't depending upon their personality styles. Right. But if Mrs. Jones calls in with a raving review or sends a phenomenal letter, not on you know, a Facebook or something along those lines, but they actually take the time to call or take the time to write a letter, then you've got to share it. Yeah, That will make them feel good too. Absolutely. And it was so funny because I had this one guy in one of my audiences saying that he did that. He was working at a big box store, got a great kudos letter from a customer who was just thrilled with him. He's beaming. His manager gets up and reads it to the, at the company meeting, did all the right things. The next manager got up and said, yeah, nice letter from your mother. Oh, my gosh. And that kid was gone six weeks later. Yeah, so I would be we too. Never have, yeah, we never have um, fun at someone else's expense. You know, here's a moment, here's a proud moment that that guy could have been with that company for five, six, seven years for feeling appreciated and the boost of that manager recognizing him versus somebody else thinking that they're going to be funny and all of a sudden now they just lost a really great employee. Yeah, I mean, somebody should have taken that manager to task. Exactly. That's what should have happened. Right. So, Lisa, final thoughts, please. Gratitude is easy to do. It's also easy not to do, which is why it's so important that we think about these things that you have for 30 days. Take my 30 day gratitude challenge. And for the next 30 days, simply write down three to five things every morning for which you're grateful. And if you don't notice the difference, I promise you that other people will. Absolutely. Give us your website address one more time, please. Lisa Ryan Speaks, L-I-S-A-R-Y-A-N-S-P-E-A-K-S dot com. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us. I am grateful for your joining us today. You are very welcome, my friend. And thanks to all of you. I'm grateful for you, too. Choose one thing that you discovered and implement it in your business. These ideas, tactics, and strategies help you make more money, have more free time, and give back. If you like today's program, spread the word. Please review this podcast on any device you're listening to it on. Help a fellow contractor make more money, too. For comments or questions, call me at 770-729-0258 or email ruthking at hvacchannel.tv. Thanks for listening. Have a great and profitable day.